All right, so nice start to a new episode. I'm actually here at Venice Airport. I'm just about to uh, grab a flight over to Istanbul. I've been invited to check out a really cool collection and a car shop there uh, called Unique Designs. They're flying me out to see what basically they do out in Istanbul. And I'm really excited because it's the first time I actually go to Turkey. So um, I'm just gonna check in and uh, head over to uh, a new part of the world for me. All right, so I've arrived here in Istanbul. I just got to go around and find my host, Erdem. Uh, I think I may have come out the wrong side. He's probably waiting over there. So I'm going to keep walking until I find how to get out of here. All right, I am in the back of a very nice uh, limousine that they sent to pick me up. Uh, there's a bit of a delay at the airport, but um, we sorted through that and now uh, I'm on my way to meet Erdem and uh, get some dinner, uh, drop off my bags and uh, just start enjoying uh, my little trip to Istanbul. Enjoying the back of this limo, it's very dark in here, but I do have uh, kind of like a Rolls Royce headliner effect going on here. I have YouTube on the big screen and I have lots of space to stretch out. And we're gonna get ready for uh, my first night here in Istanbul. Okay, so I'm here with Erden and we met up and it's now time to head to some uh, local food. Yeah, correct? Tur Turkish restaurant. Turkish restaurant. For kebabs. <laughs> and then we can chat of, uh, you know, what we got planned for the coming days because you got a lot of stuff to show me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's going to be basically kind of indulging in local car culture because I hear it's quite unique and he's got some really unique cars so we're going to get busy with that. All right, this is day two in Istanbul. I'm just about to go down. Erdem is coming to pick me up. We're going to go and hit up his shop, Junique Designs, uh, check out some of the builds he's been working on and some really cool customer cars. I'm really excited to see what uh, he does here in Istanbul. So we're going to go and do that right now. And yeah, by the way, I'm staying at a really sick hotel here, just outside of Istanbul. Um, Erdem shop is actually five minutes away, which works out really well. And, uh, you know, I'm really interested to see what car culture here is all about. I've heard some stories from Erdem last night that it's really hard to import cars that are not like 40, 50 years old from Japan and other countries. So the market is very much uh, fueled by what actually was here present in the day. Uh, in Turkey as well as stuff that comes in from Russia uh, with some rather suspicious uh, channels but uh, we'll get into that uh, as soon as we get to his shop and check out his establishment and uh, do some cool car stuff this is what I'm here for this is what I travel for this is what I do for you guys so hope you enjoy it hope it's gonna be a really nice day I'm uh, looking forward to it uh, as I am the food because the food here if it's anything to go by what I had last night is absolutely amazing so uh, we'll definitely do some of that too. We have a, a police car escort today. <laughs> this is sick. So we've arrived at your place. <laughs> Finally, look at this selection of cars. This is awesome. I'm impressed. 
the, this was the one uh, what I was telling you about my first car. Oh, the Hachiroku that you... Sounds like 20 years ago I bought this car. They had chickens instead of an yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is... It was like barn fine. Unbelievable. Now, uh, looks much better. Like this. And this is Erdem, by the way, and you own Unique Designs. And how, how many years have you been operational here? Uh, something like 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, 13, 15. And you import all these Japanese brands yeah, as yeah. well as other stuff as well. Wow. I guess we'll uh, go inside, have a tour, and then hopefully we can take some cars out for some shoots as well. And uh, indulge in some JDM awesomeness in Turkey. Okay, so I just had a bit of a rundown through these cars and it's not just aesthetics here. This is like serious power all the way. So starting off with this Pandem FC, uh, Erdem has swapped in or rather swapped out the 13B and gone for something a little bit more powerful. Uh, he decided with a 2J. Yes, that is a FC with a 2J. Wow. How much horsepower does this one have? Uh, we haven't dynoed yet, but uh, we expect something like 600. 600, yeah. which is plenty. I'm just surprised it actually fits under the sleek hood lines of the FC. Uh, it looks super cool. I think we should definitely take this out for a proper shoot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta pick cars to shoot. It's gonna be so difficult because everything is so special. Uh, next up, the Hachiroku that you did a barn find and yeah. restored. This runs a Turbo 4A, right? Yes. Oh wow, so fully built 4AG, forged internals, a uh, little happy turbo hanging out there. And about 350 horsepower, fully built, reinforced chassis as you can see the the bars coming out of there, sitting on the work also equips. Has uh, LST. Oh, nice! So it's a drift weapon. Yeah. And this is an interesting story too. This is not actually yeah, it's, a two-door. Uh, illegal to import uh, cars. Yeah. And there is no R32 in Turkey, so we found R32 sedan and yeah. we converted to coupe. That's insane. Yeah. And then you you fitted all the parts from the coupe. To yeah. this car including a pandem yeah, wide body yeah. kit first uh, we converted to standard like uh, oem uh, r32 gtr yeah. then uh, we installed wide wheels uh, wide body kit yeah and painted to midnight purple three color yeah i noticed the the familiar r34 color unbelievable i mean that's that's something really crazy to go through just to get an r32 coupe in japan and the crazy thing is uh the actual pandem kit is blended into the bodywork rather than yeah, having to body. yeah yeah it's like it's the first i see usually the, you just yeah. have exposed we the bolts modified little bit the <coughs> side skirts are different uh, normally they weren't like this right yeah we use gtr side skirts and pandem side skirts and combine them together oh wow well it definitely pops i love how the color just changes so dramatically as you go across and even a wide body 350, yeah, 360 Modena. Uh, Ferrari, yes. This is my old car. Uh, this is also, I think, in Europe, the first, first one. Wow, that's insane. And it just continues through to the 997, which again runs a Liberty Walk kit. And that completes the outside portion of the shop. Uh, let's take a look at the main showroom. Let's go. And have a look at the, some of the cars that you guys have on display here. And instantly, wow. I feel like I'm back in Japan at Liberty Walk or something. Wait, let me turn on the lights a little bit more. Nice. Wow. Better this way. Nice job. I have to say, I'm really impressed because you even have the old and new. Uh, this is 996. Uh, we also built 997. This is our second build. So basically, you really bring in you know, legit brands to, to Turkey. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, you really focus on authenticity and just getting that culture yeah. to come we here. We are uh, strictly against the replica. Yeah. Uh, and it's like a big war. Like I am the <laughs> only one yeah. who is trying to sell and build like original products uh, and original cars. Uh, but the market is not this much uh, good. Yeah. So it's a little bit hard, but uh, we will stay like this. No, no, you, you go for it because yeah. that's, we really appreciate that stuff, you know. Because you know. we know how hard to design these kits, how much efforts do they give. Uh, we 
respect to designers, yeah. we respect to companies. But also, you know, brands like Work and Raise and you know every other body kit manufacturers have really big trouble yeah. stopping reproductions being made in China. And yeah, across yeah, Asia, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Here, all it's all the same. I go to uh, internet sales, uh, and I, what I see, they say like, "Oh, Liberty Wall kit." It looks like shit, yeah. so bad looking, and the price is maybe 10 times cheaper than yeah, yeah. what we uh, pay. Uh, people believe, people say like, oh, it's also Liberty Walk, it also looks good, but when you see a real product and no, replica, it's, it's nothing even comparable. It's a whole different yeah. thing, yeah. So all the new 996 running work World wheels, yeah. And it's a very deep purple, really cool. I actually remember shooting the first 996 they made back, God, it must be like 10 years ago now. We, we didn't uh, install the big wing, uh, we wanted to keep it more simple, this car, yeah. uh, because 997, we also has uh, John Player race livery yeah. and big wing, so this one we wanted to keep like clean. Soon we will uh, install air suspension, we already uh, got the parts, uh, so wheels maybe can change, uh, the fitment will be better. Nice. And I see you have something really special here. This is a Ford Capri. Yeah, we converted it uh, from standard Capri to uh, RS1. So you even did an engine yeah. transplant on this? Everything, suspension, engine, exterior, interior, everything. Amazing. And casually standing FD. <laughs> in front of an FD. And you were saying there is only seven uh, FDs? Something like that. It's, it's so seldom. Uh, maximum nine, but uh, as I know, there is only seven. And you have one of them. Yeah. And you also have two FCs. Yeah, but and one FP. And you, and you said that the first series of the FC, there's only two or three cars. In yes, the two, two cars only. And That's we have one of them. That's amazing. Yeah. And w what have you done to this one? We'll, t we'll take a look later on, but it already has really nice we ordered uh, work wheels for this car, uh, origin white body kit, yeah. and uh, we will change color to lava orange, wow. Porsche's color, yeah. We will make uh, interesting car. We will oh. change hood. There is like in Japan a brand called Scoot. We oh yeah, ordered. I love the Scoot. Scoot yeah. hood is the best for FCs, uh, FDs rather. And what a cool hangout space here with the TV area, the must have game corner <laughs> drums yeah. sometimes uh, we play here i play drums my sister play guitar oh, my nice. friends also sing <laughs> so we have cool our like own little band it's so a cool chill we, out we place. chill out yeah. yeah that's amazing and you have all the the work wheels that you display here yeah it's just for display that's amazing it's really cool to come to a faraway country like turkey and see somebody really pushing you know bringing in legit products this is Limited edition oh, Liberty, Liberty Walk steering wheel. That's so cool. And there's uh, another little section to the shop next yeah. door. Should Let's we go. Let's have go. a look? some RWB cars here nice because you, you also do work with RWB right you yeah, we, we only like uh, sold their stuff uh, clothing merchandise. and uh, yeah merchandise uh, but in future we plan to build uh, 997 nice yeah that'll be cool to see it's, one it's in my the... dream yeah I always wanted to have air cooled uh, 911 yeah but uh, it's hard to find in Turkey so we will go for 997 well there you go yeah there's Nakai <laughs> yeah, this is uh, really interesting. 
this is signature of uh, Katosan from Liberty Walk. It was on my dashboard uh, when I sold the car. I said I can't give this. I will cut it. <laughs> you cut it out. You can make a new, <laughs> new like uh, upholstery, uh, and I keep it like this. It's nice. an important memory. I can't I bet, yeah. give it to anyone. <laughs> of course. And over here, center stage, a Supra. Yeah. What's 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 the story with this one? Oh, this is crazy one. Uh, Supra is so hard to find in Turkey. Uh, this is my friend's car. Uh, we built this car for him. Originally it was white color, uh, we painted to this uh, interesting bronze, we ordered uh, carbon fiber hood, uh, original Redox uh, white body kits with oh, carbon fiber. So it's an fiber. original Redox? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's so nice. We love Max Orido. <laughs> so, yeah, Max is awesome. <laughs> yeah, my childhood passed with his video. So oh really? Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a JDM inspiration. Yeah, he? yeah, it's legend. Wow, that is wide. That's a big spoiler too. Yeah, this is uh, whale side. Oh, that's whale side? Yeah, oh. whale side one. Um, I'm a fan of Yokomaku because I appreciate what he's done for the yeah. scene. And now yeah. that he's back, I'm, I'm trying to support him as much as possible. But yeah, what a nice color. I have to say, this is very unique. Oh my Lord. Whew. That is impressive. Yeah, it's... That is, that's some <laughs> serious stuff there. Yeah. So what's the, what's the spec on, on the engine? Uh, most of parts are custom made on CNC. Uh, owner of car has a factory. Oh. So uh, we draw and we plan parts together and he, so he makes builds his own. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. On his Including the factory. Plan and look at that. Internal of angels are uh, forged. So uh, it can go up to more than, I think, 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, that's a big turbo, too. Yeah. Precision. Very, very big. <laughs> and what about transmission? Can the transmission take it? Or? Now, uh, as I know, he ordered some BMW transmission. Uh, oh, like yeah. the ZF? The yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen yeah. they do that now, the yeah. conversions. It's, it starts to be popular in Turkey, so yeah. uh, he will go for it. Nice. Yeah. Now it has stock... Uh, Supra transmission, but we will change it. Super Again, work wheels. Work wheels, hiding the super calipers. Each car we built, we use work wheels yeah. uh, because they are so friendly for us and we love their products. Nice. Oh, it's super clean inside here too. Yeah, TRD steering wheel. Alcantara everywhere, across the dash, TRD steering wheel. Custom shift knob, carbon fiber uh, trims. It's amazing. Look at all the. Oh man, I have to go the other side to have a look at those uh, okay. modules. It's an interesting way to house these. Nice. What possible thing could go better than food with cars? We all know what Turkey is really famous for. Look at that. It's that is absolutely amazing. One of my favorite food. I think it's about to be my favorite food too. <laughs> I hope so. 
Okay, so I had a nice look around through the shop and I'm just gonna do a nice detailed pass at the cars uh, lined up outside now. Spent most of the afternoon chatting to air them and just understanding car culture here in Turkey, how it differs from you know what we're used to uh, in other sides of the of the globe. And uh, it's it just m emphasizes how difficult it is to you know have cars like this FC and this Hachiroku, not to mention all the other stuff here lined up outside the shop. But uh, yeah, let's dive a little bit deeper into each car. Uh, we are actually going to take uh, the FC, the AE86 and the Supra out tomorrow for like a proper shoot. Um, but nonetheless, I just wanted to kind of touch uh, on the details while we're here and we have a bit of time. So let's start with the FC. Okay, so obviously what makes this car really special is the fact that it's running a Pandem over Fender kit, which really transforms that front end with those additional four center projectors. Uh, obviously this has been engine swapped with a 2J, so no 13B here, sorry rotary guys. Uh, but uh, you know, Erdem wanted to create something unique, something different, something very powerful. So uh, the 2J was a bit of a no-brainer. And like I mentioned before, I'm quite surprised that they actually managed to fit it uh, within the confines of you know, the actual stock hood here. Uh, but uh, there you go, they managed to do it. Along with all the fabrication work, they've uh, gone ahead and done some cycle fenders, so this car potentially could be turned into a bit of a drift uh, weapon. It runs a top-mounted uh, Garrett Turbo and pushes out decent power. We'll find out all the details tomorrow when we take it out. Here on the side, I did notice that it's running some big AP Racing six spots up front and a carbon fiber panel for the sunroof and a very simple nice comfortable interior we do like a bit of simplicity and from the back it's got that unmistakable tandem look with that almost ducktail spoiler all right moving over to the hachiroku so as Erdem told us, this was a bit of a barn find. Uh, it basically was just a bare chassis when he found it. He uh, said there was actually chickens living in the engine bay. Uh, so you had to source all the parts, and I mean all the parts, to recreate a basically brand new car. And seeing this was actually 11 to start off with, he actually did a face swap, turning it into a Treno with the pop-out headlights, of course. And in the process, went for a highly modified 4AG uh, going for a turbo conversion you can see how he replaced the uh, old style igniter setup with some R8 coils individually for each cylinder and this thing punches out a decent amount of power and it's a bit of a drift toy I do like the equips here fitted and very much looking forward to going out for a ride in this. And now we move on to what has to be the craziest project of them all. Uh, you know, I kind of rushed through it before when we first started talking to Erdem outside his shop, but after seeing some of the images uh, of the build itself, uh, this was beyond anything that I've ever seen when it comes to fabrication. So, like I said, they started with a four door and they basically chopped out the roof and the B pillar and then added the coupe uh, door which is obviously longer and then the quarter panel and just basically stitched it all together and that is because you are not allowed to import anything uh, of this vintage in uh, Turkey so what he was able to find is what he could only work with and he basically created his own Pandem GTR at the moment the car sits high because there is actually no engine in here uh, it's awaiting either a 2J swap or a RB26 swap uh, this car actually is in its third phase of, uh, I guess, transformation. It used to be first a red uh, stock body car, then it was a red Pandan car, then it got seized by the police because they actually thought he imported the GTR from another country. And after two years, he managed to get the car back and transformed it into this Midnight uh, Purple 3 uh, with all the blended in panel work here. And it really is so wide at the back so so wide that kind of gives you an idea and i can't wait to see this finish with a proper engine and driving all right next up we have the liberty walk ferrari 360 modena uh, so i've actually shot one of these cars at liberty walk in tokyo 
Um, actually, no, I take that back. I shot it in Nagoya at the headquarter. And they are not that popular in the sense that, you know, these cars are getting really expensive and people are not really uh, for cutting them up. So this makes it the only Liberty Walk car here in Turkey, possibly one of two or three in Europe. So it's a pretty rare sight to be seeing this. And it actually used to be Erdem's private car. It used to be black. And since selling it to his customer, the car has been sprayed into a yellow and uh, it looks a little bit different to when he actually uh, originally built it. Next up in front of the shop is the Liberty Walk 997. This thing looks evil as hell. It sits on air suspension. You see the Liberty Walk logos there. Runs three SDM wheels on Michelin tires and of course that rear end is finished off with a nice little ducktail. And to end up the lineup we have the Z32 here. This is actually something they're starting to work on today. It's gonna get a bit of a transformation. I'm not gonna give it away, uh, but we'll definitely have to come back and reshoot this when it's done. Um, there's so much I wanna shoot that these guys have built. They build a ton of cars here and then end up selling them off to customers. So uh, I think I'm just scratching the surface of what uh, Junique Designs has actually created here in Turkey. But uh, I'm a big fan of Z32, so kind of keen to see uh, what's going to come of this one. Right behind me, like I mentioned before, is a few other projects that are coming up. I'm not really sure what's happening with the Alpha 75. I have a very special place in my heart uh, for this car. It used to be uh, basically the car that I learned to drive in properly. My dad's old family sedan sitting next to another AE86 that Erdem has picked up. And I was looking at these two and I was kind of impressed at how similarly sized they are. I always assumed that the A86 was way smaller, but the 75 is pretty compact itself. Okay, so I'm a big fan of 928s. Of course, this was a car that, you know, uh, Porsche thought was going to replace the 911. It really didn't, but then again, it created another niche uh, for Porsche, you know, uh, kind of showing that they can build other cars other than the 911. And this has a bit of a following. Uh, we actually saw um, the base model of the Nardone Resto mod in Italy being built. More on that very soon, possibly on my next visit here to Europe. All right, so I'm gonna head inside the, the secondary workshop here or display room and have a little walk around on that crazy Supra. Okay, so this is car number three that we are gonna take out for a shoot tomorrow. Uh, this is quite special because, you know, like everything that Janique uh, design does here in Turkey is that they've stuck to legit products. So the car runs a wide body uh, redox kit and it's mated to a gigantic Velside rear spoiler. So big up to Yokomaku san, you can actually see the Velside logo under there. Do not ask me why they put the emblem there. And this thing is a beast. We had a look at it before and it is just fully built across the board here, starting off with the interior. Alcantara and leather everywhere, TRD steering wheel, all the gauges, and then ending with this impressive, fully built 2J, cranking out a thousand horsepower on the highest boost setting. Okay, so that wraps up the first video from Janique Design here in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, we are actually gonna take three cars out tomorrow, as well as hitting up the local track, which is where F1 is held. Uh, there's a bit of a museum there that we're gonna go check out. So uh, there's gonna be some awesome stuff coming up on the channel from an area of the world that I never thought I would actually visit. So big up to Erdem for inviting me out and uh, make sure you check back soon because there's a lot of stuff coming. Yeah.